I'm Susan Phillips. I'm a professor in the School of Public Policy and Administration at Carleton University, and I supervise Canada's first and only Masters of Philanthropy and Nonprofit Leadership. I do research in philanthropy. I edit the leading international journal in the field. I'm immersed in research, so it wasn't that difficult to pull together a few thoughts, although asking an academic to speak in seven minutes is very uh, dangerous. As an academic, I have 27 points, all of which will be on the exam, but I will constrain myself. My main point is this. To give smart, we collectively need to be smart, or at least smarter. Philanthropy is at a, a critical time that requires us to be more strategic and impactful. We have complex societal and environmental problems that governments alone can't tackle. There is an impending intergenerational transfer of wealth and changes in lifetime wealth as family and professional businesses are sold. Millennials outnumber the boomers, and they give differently. Women have independent wealth and influence, and they give differently. We are an, or an enormously diverse country, and those communities have specific ways of engagement. Technology has created new means of giving, and big data are everywhere. All of this creates new opportunities and challenges for philanthropy. So in this context, what is smart philanthropy that has impact? Let's start at the high end of philanthropy. High net worth families in Canada are underperforming. They are less generous, in, in general, as a percentage of their wealth than middle or lower income Canadians. And their rate of giving has been stagnant, even declining, for years. The Gen Xers, the 1970s babies, are the worst. Now, there are probably lots of good reasons for this, housing costs, etc. But we need to pull high net worth families into more engaged philanthropy. For example, wealth advisors could be better informed and serve their clients more fully about giving options. Ask Ruth McKenzie about the work that the Canadian Association of Gift Planners is doing in this regard. For many families, donor-advised funds have become a favored vehicle, and they are the fastest destination for charitable giving in the US and Canada. Some of you probably hold such funds. If so, you have a growing responsibility to learn and to think about how you will put these to good use. Don't be lazy. Perhaps call on your community foundation as a valuable resource in learning about community needs. With growing income inequality, the social license of big philanthropy, big institutionalized philanthropy, private and corporate foundations, as well as large donor-advised funds, is being called into question. As organizations sitting on billions of tax-subsidized assets held in perpetuity forever and forever and forever, foundations are appropriately facing new questions about their impact. With some important exceptions, and you will hear about one tonight, private foundations are unduly conservative in Canada and are not as engaged in strategic systems change to the extent they could be. They, too, need to step up. But the bulk of philanthropy is not big philanthropy. It's about more modest donors and volunteers, about people like us in this room. Of course, we, we give with our hearts. Mum died from a, a, a particular disease, and, and you want to help find a cure. You love your university experience, and you want to give to your alum. But if we want to make systems change, 
we need to use our heads more and explore more. Not forgetting our universities, of course, after all, my president is here. <laughs> Smart giving usually starts with people engaging with causes and organizations in other ways before and in addition to their giving. They ask questions, they volunteer, they learn how systems work and how to disrupt them. They test drive organizations for impact. For instance, if you are interested in ending homelessness, ask Katie Burkholder Harris about how the system works in the first place. The charities and other organizations that are conduits for philanthropy are also facing a transformation. But they are constrained in how well they can perform, constrained in part by us, donors. To have greater impact, many need new kinds of skills, skills to innovate and assess what works, particularly data analytics skills. They need better technologies to integrate services and use data effectively. Many require greater financial literacy to engage the social finance markets that are emerging. Yet these systems are underdeveloped. Why so? Well, in large part, it's because of the overhead myth. There is a widespread perception among funders and donors, us, that effective charities are those with low administrative costs or low overhead costs. Charities have responded accordingly to these expectations. Deed research shows that overhead costs have been declining over the past decade. What this does is to create a starvation cycle. Think about what those donations support. Skills development, technology, recruitment, the very systems needed to be innovative and impactful. As donors, we need to change our assumptions about overhead. If you are a fundraiser who claims that 100% of the donations go to the program, shame on you. This occurs, this occurs only if someone donated or volunteered the cost of fundraising and other program supports, and you need to tell us that. There's also an impending leadership gap in the charitable sector. Over 40% of executive directors, according to a recent report, are over 55. And most organizations have no succession planning or leadership training. The leaders of the future will not and should not be the same as in the past. At the same time, the governance of charities, including volunteer-led boards, is becoming more complex with a greater emphasis on moral leadership, on meaningful, well-performing, and inclusive organizational cultures, which is particularly important to attract and retain the millennials. In so many respects, ethics in philanthropy has never been more important. More sophisticated education for leadership will be essential which is why we at Carleton are so passionate about building expertise and graduate education for philanthropy. In short, to give smarter, we need to be smarter. As individuals and families, to ask more questions, to explore, to find out why systems don't work and how to disrupt them, to dispel the overhead myth. As institutions, to be more strategic in the use of endowed assets, and collaborate with others in change. As governments, to ensure an enabling environment. I'd be happy to talk about that later. Collectively, we need to invest in education, R&D, and infrastructure for those who can use our philanthropy well. Thank you. Thank you.